all religions have a provision for charity. In Islam, zakat is one of the five basic tenets. It is obligatory on all earning Muslims. In India, its estimated collection is around 40,000 crore rupees every year. This amount is almost equal to the annual budget of Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation. If the funds collected by way of zakat are utilized in a better, imaginative way, it could significantly contribute to nation building. Welcome to The Matrix. All eligible Muslims must pay 2.5% of everything they own, savings, bank accounts, gold, investment, in excess of what they use annually. Muslims in India actually end up paying a lot of money in zakat. Yet, one-fourth of beggars in country are Muslims. Among them, women are in majority and one-third of the young men and women between 18 to 25 years are uneducated and unemployed. I am happy to have with me an eminent guest to discuss this topic today. The question I raise today is, should zakat funds be collected and utilized in a more imaginative way to make them useful for improving education and hospitals? Or do we allow it to be utilized in a random way which is not of much consequence? I now introduce my guest, uh, Dr. Zafar Mahmood, who is a former civil servant and now he runs an organization called Zakat Foundation. Uh, Dr. Zafar, my first question to you would be that, uh, is India using Zakat properly? Are we creating institutions from Zakat funds or does it continue to be a random practice? Um, uh, very, it's very unfortunate that it is not. The, uh, the answer of your question is in negative. It's not, we are not doing, although we have come a long way as far as uh, passing of the rickets is concerned, particularly after independence. Mm. But then uh, Muslims of India uh, have not properly understood the message of the Creator, the Almighty's message in different ways, particularly in Zakat. Mm -hmm. Zakat is an outstanding phenomenon. Mm. That is all the more reason why even the United Nations has uh, given its attention to zakat as uh, a factor for achievement of the SDGs mm -hmm. of 2030. So, uh, but then the Mus we, the Muslims of India, are quite lagging behind, mm -hmm. and I would uh, put the blame on people like myself mm -hmm. that we should have. Uh, uh, come forward in time, in, number one, because God has made us educated, so we should have uh, tried much earlier to study mm -hmm. what is God's message, properly appreciate it with the help of the commentaries, and then after that implement it, mm -hmm. do one's best in order to implement it, mm -hmm. at the individual level and at the organizational level. Mm -hmm. So, not much has been done. In fact, during the first uh, 50 years, mm -hmm. five decades after independence, mm -hmm. there was hardly any, it was total vacuum, hardly any organization for collection of zakat and its uh, institutionalized utilization. Mm -hmm. So it was in late uh, last century, 1997, that uh, we, some people, uh, got together and we thought that uh, uh, there should be some proper organization of zakat and mm -hmm. that is the challenge we accepted at that time. Mm -hmm. And Alhamdulillah, uh, God has helped us and we have been able to create about 25 institutions mm -hmm. of different kinds, all covered with the spirit of the Sharia. Right. I will I'll come to uh, your foundation later, uh, but I want to understand from you what is this thing of uh, uh, that people tend to get satisfaction more of giving random uh, zakat rather than you know going in for the long term you know sort of uh, institutes uh, which could uh, you know the the satisfaction is immediate you know if you pay give charity to somebody who's in need uh, that should be the priority now that seems to be the the general uh, you know sort of uh, uh, practice what do you say I don't think that uh, that immediate satisfaction is the driving force for this practice. Mm -hmm. 
the proper reason mm -hmm. which comes out after proper analysis and research mm -hmm. of doing this is that the leaders mm -hmm. of the community including the spiritual leaders they have not done their duty fully properly in order to drive home mm -hmm. the significance of zakat right actually mm -hmm. when zakat started in in islam mm -hmm. how did it start so some companions of the prophet they had somehow stayed back and had not accompanied him for uh, some ghazwa mm -hmm. at that time uh, after some time they realized th that th their fault and they said ki oh we should have gone mm -hmm. and they were quite moneyed people so it is said that they tied themselves in the pillar and they and did not eat anything and did not drink water okay let the prophet come back <coughs> peace be upon him and untie us and then and forgive us then only we will have any food etc so prophet came back and he forgave them etc so then they offered some some assets and some money to the prophet he didn't know because there was no direction from god mm. so then this ayat came right and it was revealed that take from them o prophet accept from them and utilize it in, in such and such manner etc if god would have wished he would he could have said tell them to hmm. give it to the needy people right but god did not say that so sure. said take from them yeah. so head of the state is being told to take to the car right the person who is in charge of the affairs of the society right. is being told to to collect the car right and spend it in a given fashion so that is the genesis of the organized collection and utilization of the car which is not brought to the notice of the people mm -hmm. that is the reason that people just uh, by default sure. give it individually right so so clearly there needs to be some objectivity in the use of zakat so do you think that the zakat fund should be utilized to to create educational institutes or nursing homes hospitals maybe for the community and the, yes. and the country i'm so happy that you asked this question and the answer is in affirmative hmm. there are i'm sure uh, some people claiming knowledge of uh, shariat and the law emanating from quran and hadith hmm. who, who would be saying that no no institution would be created with the help of zakat but then we have to keep this in mind mm -hmm. that the faith has not been revealed only for the people of india we happen to be muslims otherwise the faith has been revealed for people of the world right so the first source of any shariat law is quran the other second source is hadith and if on some particular topic some particular issue these two are not very clear or silent then the third is ijma right ijma is convergence of opinion of the ulama of the learned people of the world right community and if that also is not helpful then i ask that is on the basis of whatever has been said in the quran and hadith and ijma what is the individual opinion and the individual individual can proceed accordingly right. so we should we should keep that in mind that what is the opinion as per ujma so i have been attending international conferences of zakat in fact i am a very active member of the world zakat forum also and mm -hmm. i have been office bearer also there so on the basis of what transpires at the international community level mm -hmm. i can tell you yes the answer of your question is an affirmative in fact in indonesia and in malaysia and muslim majority nations right. there are institutions which are which have been created and hmm. which are being created even now hmm. just for the welfare of the people sir uh, we would like to understand from you you have been running like you said uh, an organization which is uh, you know involved in zakat work and you've been doing it quite successfully you know in a very transparent manner we'd like to understand what is your model of uh, what's the model of zakat foundation how do you operate yeah see 
we if if uh, in nutshell i have to present what zakat foundation of india has been doing in fact zakat foundation of india it is important to uh, mention here that the website is zakatindia.org so the details are available there so the the the, the uh, projects which we have been doing vertically you can divide it into two categories the micro and the macro hmm. micro are like we have established orphanages separately for boys and girls hmm. in various places then we we run day care centers there are large number of people poor people sturdy poor people <coughs> who go and stand <coughs> on the crossroads in different cities that uh, offering themselves to be hired for physical labor throughout the day in the evening give me 500 rupees and their wife would be mopping some floor in some house right. their children day for day care oh. so that's what we are doing. we are running day care centers we give them food we educate them and and take care of them in different ways we women run that usually and it includes <coughs> uh, children from uh, you know uh, all communities of the yes yes all our facilities are for uh, for all community right but then because we happen to be muslims so majority of the people who come to us are muslims only. right so <coughs> this is secondly and thirdly that <coughs> uh, this is uh, is uh, we run tailoring institutes ne tailoring and knitting institutes hmm. for poor girls okay in order to empower them hmm. then we run medical centers mm -hmm. quite a few medical centers for the needy and poor mm. we run also uh, we have scholarship schemes mm. for the monthly ration to be given to the poor widows right the etc these we put in the category of micro mm -hmm. some people get benefited for some time right micro micro Ma many ngos do that by mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. but the second category is quite unique that mm -hmm. is macro right where institutional arrangements are made mm -hmm. in order to benefit the deprived sections of society for decades and maybe centuries mm -hmm. so in that mm -hmm. one is our flagship project sir sayed coaching and guidance center for competitive examinations there are quite talented boys and girls mm -hmm. in the community in the society but they are not able to participate in the competitive process at the top level because of certain constraints so we remove those constraints we reach out identify the most academically the brightest boys and girls in india in different different places and select them prop through a proper competitive examination and then bring them to delhi why delhi because the most successful hmm. statistically most successful coaching institutes for competitive examinations all of them are in delhi right. that's why we created hostels here we bring them here put them get them trained and coached in those institutes best possible coaching institutes and we pay 90% of the fees etc which is quite high and the success is alhamdulillah quite nicely going up and up etc so this is one secondly social societal upbringing mm -hmm. of the community and the best way to do that is the friday sermon but the friday sermon the contents of friday sermon mm -hmm. need to be properly taken care of monitored and improved continuously there should be a continuous process for doing that so that's why we established ashab al sufa institute for imams and khatibs okay yeah. yes so we organize uh, training sessions small and big and medium size depending upon the necessity where senior imams they also come and senior scholars also come and there is an interaction mm. what the the imam the khatib should be speaking on friday in the sermon and mm. what should he should not be speaking right particularly mm. in the context of what the prophet had meant it to be right the prophet was mm. using the mosque for everything under the sun every good work under the sun but our mosques are closed only for two and a half hours in 24 hours we are using them right. for congregational prayers right. otherwise such uh, prime properties yes. and large number of properties number they are underutilized so mm. if we 
if we follow hmm. whatever prophet peace be upon him used to do right. and particularly the sermon on the friday mm -hmm. that will be very helpful for societal upbringing so you mentioned about you know that it's a collective responsibility and the religious bodies like ulemas and spiritual bodies do you think they also need to take some initiatives for creating awareness about zakat's good use or proper use you know which could have you know long term impact on 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 the people of the country yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh, i mean it has to be like that and mm. to some extent it is also being done also like that mm -hmm. for example i'll tell you in the gas foundation of india we have a, a body a guiding guiding body mm -hmm. con consultative committee of ulama mm. ulama of india level and ulama of the world level also right yeah so uh, we keep on meeting consulting talking to each other particularly if there is a spe specific issue then it is circulated and opinions are obtained after which are given and provided after proper study and mm. research etc mm. mm. so that work is going on but you are right i fully agree with you much more is required to be done it's not too much app apparent that this work is being done right of course the religious teaching is tutoring is being done in madrasas mm. and in uh, uh, jamias mm. but then uh, uh, it should not remain confined to that hmm. it should be available to the people in general also hmm. so hmm. for that yes you are right the ulama as well as the scholars need to come together hmm. and uh, have some sort of that mechanism hmm. where there should should be a source of information hmm. for the people in general also right uh, sir also like to understand from you because you're also a member of world zakat forum and you've traveled extensively what are the models which have been adopted by countries like say indonesia malaysia uk or us how how do they go about their zakat uh, collection and uh, you know its use it, it is done um, as a combination hmm. of individual zakat hmm. and institutional utilization right so uh, they have taken the indonesia and malaysia zakat organizations hmm. they took us the those who co were coming from other countries they took us for tours of their institutional facilities okay there are world class mm -hmm. outstanding mm -hmm. coaching and training centers mm -hmm. both for boys and girls men and women right yeah so in order to empower mm -hmm. the deprived sections of society so that they are professionally equipped and after that they are able to earn by themselves so multi storied air conditioned buildings mm. where thousands of women are sitting on the machines and different kinds of top class machines available in india in the world mm. and uh, they are learning out of that there are specific courses 6 months 1 year 2 mm. years courses etc mm. so uh, that work is being done and i'm quite impressed and we need to imitate them at home right sir also that uh, you know this digital payment platforms uh, do you think they have made giving zakat convenient and many more people are opting for this uh, you know the digital payment mode uh, yes do you think that it could uh, it could be a force multiplier it could uh, you know uh, help in uh, bringing about uh, you know some sort of system in place which uh, which can uh, have which can be utilized in a better manner as far as, as far as we are concerned it's already there hmm. when i was uh, uh, in the car coming to your studio just now right three or four persons hmm. messaged me on whatsapp mm -hmm. that i have paid the the card this this much amount and this is the number etc hmm. on online hmm. to the card foundation of india okay so and giving the link etc hmm. et many people ask for the link particularly during ramadan yes so it's there on our home page so it and it is quite widely being utilized in right. fact most i would say more than 90% of the zakat hmm. is coming through digital means only now digital means yeah. but also there is this thing of uh, people you know largely give zakat in the month of ramzan mm -hmm. uh is it uh, uh, you know is it as per the uh, requirement of religion or mm. uh, there is no requirement a, of uh, religion hmm. zakat for zakat there is no specific uh, 
टाइम शेड्यूल वन कैन चूज एनी ईयर आउट ऑफ थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज राइट एंड आफ्टर एनदर थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज अगेन ऑन द सेम डेट वन कैन अराउंड दैट टाइम वन कैन गिव बट देर इज नो कंपल्शन फ्रॉम द फेथ साइड बट इट दैट मच इज श्योर दैट एनी थिंग दैट यू गुड you do to please the almighty hmm. if you do it in ramadan so during ramadan that fetches you much more sawab yes so that maybe the... 70 times maybe 700 times etc hmm. hmm. so that is uh, <laughs> the factor that works here right. why people want to give zakat in ramadan right. otherwise many people in fact uh, in the zakat foundation of india throughout the day through every all the 365 days there right. is uh, incoming zakat akbar sure and, and of course zakat is open to all any needy person it not not necessarily be given to a, a muslim it can be given to people from uh, needy people from other communities as well isn't it that's right and uh, there is uh, there is nothing in the quran hmm. or in hadith which says that hmm. although there are different interpretations yes. and i respect the people who do the interpretations etc but then uh, ev- god has said that every person whom i have made educated hmm. it's his or her duty hmm. to read my message properly and then appreciate it understand it and then implement it hmm. so my understanding is is that one and of course god says that he is rabbul alamin and not of just of course yes, yes. <laughs> uh, now i would like to ask you do you think that if utilized properly zakat could become a game changer for the muslim community uh, and is there any authentic data which can tell us you know what is the uh, uh, what is the exact amount of collection of zakat in india there, there is no way to mm-hmm. do that mm-hmm. to, to find out what is the entire uh, the collection because mm-hmm. as you have just now said in the beginning very rightly mm-hmm. that zakat even now in 21st century also mm-hmm. it is mostly given individually mm-hmm. and it is uh, i mean there is no system of recording etc mm-hmm. because it's not done digitally in most of the time mm-hmm. so therefore there is no way but, but then there can be a fair uh, kind of guesstimate Mm-hmm. like uh, if we say according to census uh, maybe 180 million mm-hmm. muslims in india mm-hmm. so how out of 180 million what percentage you will say mm-hmm. that those who are uh, eligible for giving zakat right okay so Supp- if it suppose for example very roughly if you mm-hmm. take 10% mm-hmm. so 1.8 <laughs> yeah and <laughs> so, you, yeah, so accordingly mm-hmm. if you c- calculate that there can be some guesstimate and some people have done that also mm-hmm. but uh, there is no particular specific data in this regard i wish there is some yes. maybe in future uh, some of us are able to do that mm. yeah. uh, also uh, do you think that women especially in in our community they can play in a very active role in better utilization of zakat because uh, mostly it's seen that women are very active and very you know they are very active as far as zakat is concerned in the households they are very particular do you think they can play a greater role in uh, better utilization of zakat uh, sh- surely why not uh, i mean men and women should be equally important and equally doing the work uh, of allah also hmm. uh, but then there is something come to my mind out of your question is that uh, in india there is a tradition of uh, having a lot of uh, gold right. jewelry yes. in the household yes and usually there is an understanding that on that one need not give zakat hmm. so, but that's not correct that's not correct uh, that is a part of the wealth hmm. and one must give zakat on that also hmm. if there is no cash hmm. then a part of the jewelry has to be disposed of right and yes then it has to be given okay. so that is the spirit sure. so we have to understand the proper message hmm. and then implement that definitely women are uh, not only most welcome but i'm sure men in many places women are doing also this work hmm. but then the educated women like men hmm. have also duty to understand right. the basics of zakat hmm. in fact uh, zakat needs to be understood very broadly hmm. in the broader context of god's message to humanity hmm. what is the purpose of creation of humanity hmm. okay what uh, the what are the 
base in directive principles of uh, Islamic policy. Right. Like direct, one of the direct. Uh, I, let me quickly answer to both these questions. The uh, purpose of creation of humanity is 11.7 Surah Hud point, uh, point 7, mm. uh, ayat number 7. And that says that so that God tests us mm. as to who amongst us is more serviceable, utilizing one's resources given by God, mm. more serviceable to the fellow human being. Right. That is the purpose of creation of humanity. Mm. And the directive principles for which I was talking about mm. is that the wealth of the society should not remain confined in a few hands. Mm. It must keep on circulating. Right. So, in order to achieve the purpose of creation of humanity and to implement the directive principle, there are certain instrumentalities mm. and zakat is one of the instrumentalities. I see. Actually, zakat and other four basic pillars of Islam, mm. they, are, they are factors which should guide us and teach us and tutor us that between two prayers, I should be equally good. Right. Not that ke I have I have offered my namaz in the masjid and right. I come out and I am free to do anything. No. Sure. My work between two namazes should mm. be guided by, by what God asks me to do. Right. So that these these zakat etc. also the same thing. Mm. Zakat is two point five percent. Right. It should also guide the remaining ninety seven point five percent. Sure. That yeah. is the purpose of. So, yes. if we are able to understand the message of Allah and carry it forward to the people mm. and properly implement it in the same spirit, right. we will be ahead of the game. So, sir, I, now I'll ask you, how do we change this mindset of this, you know, this uh, thing of obsession with the micro, you know, sort of uh, uh, angle to zakat and not the macro, you know, when you look at the big picture and you say, look, if we could give this much money to the you know, making of educational institutes or, you know, you know, nursing homes for places, then it's going to help the community and the country, you know, to a large extent. It will lead to nation building also. Uh, so, how can we bring about that mindset where people realize that, you know, they have both short term and long term responsibilities? Actually, you, you are very right. In fact, uh, we are supposed to to be devoting a lot of time mm. uh, for uh, for understanding what is written in the book. Mm. I'll give you an example uh, that uh, these Christian community mm. they have their weekly sermon on Sundays. Right. So in the beginning of the year, before the new year begins, mm. they already put together mm. after consultations mutually, they put together for all the 52 weeks mm. of the upcoming year right. that which part of the Bible mm. will be recited on which Sunday mm. and that is printed mm. and that is distributed in right. advance in the community. Sure. On the other hand, nothing like that happens regarding the Friday sermon. Mm. In fact, the Imam Sahib usually hmm. does not even plan it properly. He doesn't plan it. I mean, there are exceptions. Mm -hmm. Some people are doing that wonderfully. Mm -hmm. But very mm -hmm. few and far between. Sure. Usually it is going by default. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine, I am educated. I will go and speak whatever mm -hmm. uh, comes to my mind, etc. Mm -hmm. It's not that. In fact, uh, in the Gath Foundation of India, under our unit for Imams and Khatibs, we also distribute books of the standard khutbas mm. which which can be taken help from right. and points uh, in, in fact the, uh, the, this writer khutba is not only for spiritual advancement mm. it is even for worldly advancement worldly. so that was the spirit of the prophet peace be upon him right. so far as we are able to do that mm. In fact, we are, if we are able to properly utilize the Friday sermon, you can imagine sure. at least half of the community, mm. uh, 52 times in a year, mm. for 15 minutes, right. properly bathed and clothed, mm. you know, and is sitting with, uh, with head down and is listening to what the gentleman is saying. Sure, sure. So, what he is saying becomes very important. Important, yeah. So, so that is the key. Sure. To proper utilization of the cathodes. So, very interesting point you have made, sir. Mm. 
So, uh, according to the Guardian, zakat is one of the largest forms of wealth transfer to the poor in existence. The institutionalization of zakat is the first step to be undertaken to create a better society with a focus on social welfare and economic empowerment. An exemplary caring and sharing society could be created through this provision. Zakat isn't confined to the Muslim community, but it should also be extended to all our needy countrymen. Awaz The Voice is one of the fastest growing digital media platforms. We believe that it's a bounden duty to report on the positive aspects of our mutual interdependence and we are helping communities in finding a common ground with respect to resolving the complicated questions of history, identity and memory. To read our content, type www.awasthevoice.in and also follow our social media handles. If zakat is managed and organized in a better manner and used to create institutions rather than just using it for random charity, it could alleviate many problems faced by people today and reduce our dependence for welfare on the government alone. I now wish to thank my guest, Dr. Zafar Mahmood. Thank you, sir, very much for being in our studios today. We'll be back soon with another episode on equally interesting topic. Till then, goodbye from the Matrix team.